hello, you gorgeous thing. Now, it's no secret, I love my lawn, and millions of homeowners around the country do too. But there's lots of people that just take it for granted and walk all over it and park cars on it. Well, have you ever thought about the research and development that's gone into providing us with beautiful lawns? For years, I've been working with Lawn Solutions Australia, and we're at a Lawn Solutions Australia turf farm to show you all of that. And if they don't know something about grass, it's not worth knowing. Hey, mate. Yeah, Jase, how are you going? Gavin Rogers is the head honcho here at Lawn Solutions, and he loves his lawn just as much as me. Now, this is your research facility. Turf, yes. The turf industry's changed a lot in a generation from just being cow paddocks that looked OK to what we see today, hasn't it? Oh, it's changed a lot, and uh, it's gone from selling grass to selling lawns. There's a few different options. Most people choose between Kaikuyu, Cooch or Buffalo. And there's a new kid on the block, Zoysia. How do you decide? Well, for example, Kaikuyu takes a lot of wear, but it's fast growing, so it needs a lot of mowing. Cooch is not as dense, it's a thin leaf, so it's more likely to get weeds. So Walter's my pick because it's the best all-rounder. Now, I've been using Sir Walter for about 19 of the 20 years that it's been yeah. around. Why have you called it DNA certified now? There's a lot of substitution that goes on out there in the market, and we've DNA certified it and got a certification program just so people that want to buy Sir Walter get the real thing. And this one here is Sir Grange? This is Sir Grange, yeah. So this is one of the more popular grasses in the world market today. Um, it is a shade tolerant of Sir Walter. Um, is extremely drought tolerant as well, but has a lovely fine leaf and requires about a third the mowing of most lawn grasses. And this one is Tiff Tough. I love the name Tiff Tough. Yeah, look, Tiff Tough is a very exciting grass. Um, it's come out of breeding since 1959. Low grow, low mow and low fertiliser requirement. But before you get your lawn a choice, it needs to be grown on a farm just like this. The turf industry's come a long way in a short amount of time. In fact, my grandfather used to go out on a weekend with a spade and cut little pieces of sod just for extra spending money, beer money. Then they invented machines like this, which are not much different to what I still cut a backyard lawn out with. But when you've got a couple of hundred acres, well, it's time to get fair income. Depending on your type of grass, it can take from six to 12 months to grow back from harvesting before it can be harvested again. It's fully automated. One driver, but the machine does everything. It cuts the turf, it rolls it up, it puts it onto a pallet out the back. In fact, when the pallet's full, it'll even drop it and then get ready to be put onto a truck. So in other words, your turf isn't touched by a single person until your landscaper or yourself actually take it off the pallet at your place. Meaning it hasn't been shook to death and all that soil and the roots haven't been damaged. Compared to this little beast that shakes, rattles and rolls, that there is a work of art. So you notice when they're taking the buffalo out, they leave a ribbon of about 100 mil of turf behind. Now, what happens is buffalo has a runner, which is these guys here, and over time, they grow back and join up. The reality is those runners are the things that repair your lawn. So if you've got a dead patch at home, what you can do is pick up some of those runners there's all these roots here. Now, if you disturb the soil where you've got your dead patch, aerate it a little bit, place that in, get it some contact with the soil and water it well for a month or so, your lawn will self-repair, making you Australia's smallest turf farmer. Just don't tell these guys. You're doing them out of business. Now, if you're planning on putting down a new lawn, before spending your hard-earned coin, think about how much time you can give it and what it's for. What can we look forward to in the future? Our main aim in our breeding and research program is to find lawns that are lower maintenance. Everybody wants a great lawn, but nobody wants to put the hard work into it. So we're focusing very strongly on really low fertiliser requirements. So Gav, what would be your three biggest tips to have a, a beautiful lawn that looks like this? Yeah, good question, and, and it's a fairly simple answer. The most important thing is make sure you've got the right lawn, right lawn for your environment and lifestyle, then the rest is pretty easy. Most important thing is do not overwater a lawn unless you're on a sand belt like Perth. Lawns only really need a drink once a month. Most of the time that's covered by rainfall, or if you're in a dry time, just give it a nice deep watering air. Lawns are just like people, they like to get fed. Feed it at Easter if you can, coming in the winter, to give you a good healthy lawn coming in the winter. Springtime, but we call springtime for lawns around football grand final weekend, around the October long weekend period, and then again at the end of summer. So end of February, just to top it up after that summer period. 
a healthy lawn going into winter will give you a much nicer lawn for the next six months. So give Gav's tips a go this weekend and you'll have a beautiful lawn and love it as much as I love mine.